Hello everybody, it is Joe Granado. Welcome to the brand new Nestmaker 4.1.0 tutorials. These specific tutorials are going to show off how to start creating with the base modules the easy way. All right, just as it was time for our little wizard dude to evolve into a bigger world, it is time for our little bunny dude to evolve into a bigger world. And just like the plumber before him who once chased a monkey to save his girlfriend, our, our bunny will now enter a larger world which moves to the right. Now, we are going to open up Nestmaker 410. And we are going to make a new project create blank tile sets, and we're going to call this scrolling platformer. And we are going to start with the module scrolling platformer. Now, if I haven't said it already, I'm going to say it again. This is not the scrolling platform module. This is a scrolling platform module. In fact, it's a module that has to fit within all the constraints that of all the other modules that this base of code uses. It is not a efficient a scrolling module. In fact, if you really want to make a scrolling game, you're probably going to gut a lot of this script to get rid of uh, a lot of the scripts to get out a lot of the extra nonsense that's in there that this game will never have to do because scrolling takes up a ton of resources, a ton of time on the NES. And uh, I've got some great uh, uh, Kickstarter updates that talk about why that is. Um, but anyway, just know that that this is to get you started with a scrolling engine. If you're making your magnum opus, you are probably going to be doing a lot of work to this module to make something amazing. But if you want to get up and start it in about 20 minutes, here you go. We're going to make a quick scrolling game. Um, have I covered that enough? Have I said it enough in these four videos so far? Okay, here we go. Let's first load in our tile sets. So we're going to import. Yep, we're going to overwrite all of them. And we are going to go to scrolling in our tutorials in scrolling platformer. We're going to load in our scrolling platform tile sets. Bam. And just to check it, we're going to go to pixel editor open and let's take that first tile. Yep, that is definitely our scrolling platformers. Now I'm going to load in into graphics banks right click on assets import all assets and i'm going to look for my scrolling platform assets and you can see we've got a bunch of things we've got a, a prize block uh, and some spikes and a checkpoint that we're going to be working with in here um, let's add our palettes right click on all palettes import scrolling platform palettes we are going to go to monster palettes right click and import scrolling monster uh, scrolling platform object palettes uh, we're going to go to my input editor. We're going to import input links for my scrolling platformer. Now we're going to bring in the monsters. Uh, we're going to open up monsters and import all monsters. Uh, scrolling platform monsters. And now we're going to import the game objects. I know there's a player, so I'm going to import game object. Game objects 0, 4, 8, 9, and 10. So import 0. Zero, one, two, three, four. Here we go. Import number four. Because, come on, you know, a sword, again, is much cooler than a hammer. But then again, not necessarily as cool as throwing fireballs. So we'll have to work up to that one. Uh, this is eight. We're going to import eight. Import nine and import ten. And those respectively are player death, monster death, and player victory. Um, and the player victory dance is just oh so cute. Okay. Anyway, so let's uh, let's now. I think we have everything loaded that we need, unless I forgot something. But I think I did not. Um, we're gonna go to our HUD. This is really the module. Uh, all the scrolling modules is really are really the modules that we need this use sprite zero detection for because this is what's actually going to split. This is going to stay on my starting screen, and the rest of this is going to be able to scroll without changing the position of this. And this sprite is the one that tells it, okay, that's the point in which you split. It happens when the when there's a sprite that intersects, when there's a sprite zero, the first sprite that's drawn to the screen intersects with a background tile. It's going to intersect with this, these pixels right here. That's where we're drawing uh, the graphic, the bottom right corner of the HUD, and that's where it's going to split. So that's why we, uh, that's why we, sorry, you, we use uh, this, which is just a square sprite, and we draw it with priority that puts it behind the background so we barely see it unless it's like a transparent part of the screen. Um, H 
uh, blank wait time for now we'll use one. That's why we're drawing it at about 246 and about 30. And that pretty much successfully hides it and places the top left collision at that bottom row of pixels from the HUD. So now you kind of know a little bit more what's up and we'll get into more detail with that. We are going to use uh, score and lives in our HUD. So I'm going to go to my score, which I think was element three, right? Yep. Uh, my score uh, is going to be of a number type and I'm going to give it eight places and I'm going to move it over and down and, you know, uh, again, I'll use element one to write the word score. And I'll move that into place. And then if I look, my lives I've now got in the slot for number four. And I want to give it an initial value of three or five or ten or however many lives you want. Um, I'm sorry, that was not what I wanted to do. My lives, I didn't have it clicked. I want to be a value of three. Let me make sure I didn't accidentally change any of these yes okay my lives value of three well however many lives you want your character to have it start um next uh, i'm going to need to draw that to the screen so again i'm going to use a number but i'm only going to use two places for it and i'm going to pop it over here and uh, i'm going to use element two and instead of using it as a number i'm just going to use it uh, to represent health i'm going to use it as text and i'm going to say lives and i'm going to place it right over here oops there we go um so now i'll have a score i'll have lives and i can start constructing a screen at an arbitrary location how about this one so just double click on that and i'm going to paint in some assets and you know stair stepping kind of like mario brothers um i'm going to now place my player and now is where I'm going to start to do some things that make scrolling happen. Um, first, just like before, I'm going to use my R key to sort of change all the attributes in my HUD area uh, to the to this palette here. And that way my text shows up white and continually shows up white. Um, I'm going to go to screen info. And here is where instead of clicking single screen game, I'm going to make the screen use gravity. And I'm going to make the screen scroll right and I'm gonna put edge stops player. Now, something about this, you're saying, wow, I could click scrolls right and scrolls left, and then I could get two-way scrolling. And you'd be right, you can do that. However, understand this module is not implicitly built for that functionality. It will work asterisk. It will work, and there will probably be a lot of anomalous things that you'll have to get into the code to update and change in order to get it to work as flawlessly as you want. So let you know, if you want to play around with two-way scrolling, this module will allow you to do it. You're probably going to run into the occasional bug and glitch. Um, that's just because this module was never meant to do that. It was always only meant to do one-way scrolling in either direction, but you can get in if you want to play around and 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 play around with that and see if you can get something workable and see if you can find some bugs and issues to to, to iron out. So anyway, uh, so now we've got a screen that will scroll and obviously we have no screen to scroll to. So I'm going to copy that screen, Control C and Control V, and I'm going to, you know, make this a little bit longer and I'm going to get rid of these just to make it make me able to tell that I have scrolled somewhere. So let's test that and let's make sure uh, screen info screen info did not save. And this, this has been happening with screen info. Um, if you notice that your screen info does not save, try this trick. If you notice any of these dialog boxes do not save, try this trick. Once you've clicked on the choices that you want, or you've done the selection that you want, what you're going to do is just click on any other things here and go back and make sure that it's it, there you go so now it locked in those values um, i'm going to come over here and do the same thing and use gravity scrolls right edge stops player and just click off of that control and there those are locked in now okay so now let's test this and i should be able to run and jump and move and do the things that you know scrolling platformer does all right, so I've got my little character and the screen, it scrolls and the HUD stays in the same place. 
Um, now, again, you can almost see right here, and I apologize for the barking dog and the screaming baby. These are the cacophony of sounds that we have when while trying to make tutorials for Nestmaker in our glorious Nestmaker studios, which are the spare bedroom in my tiny house in Florida. So anyway, this uh, this uh, you can see this Sprite Zero right here. You can actually see the top of it. The rest of it is hiding behind the background. Now, this is transparent background, which is why we see it. I could move it over by a few pixels, but I want you to see it. I wanted you to understand what's actually happening. It's being drawn here in this spot, and uh, it's seeing a contact with the background here, so that's where it's registering the Sprite Zero scroll. That's where it's actually splitting the screen is right here, and we're using the H-blank to know how long to wait until the edge of the screen to know when to separate the screen. So anyway... That's why we have this little extra dark blue looking bar here. I could change that color to black or something like that. You wouldn't even see it at all. Or I could just move it over until it's completely hiding behind this if I wanted to. But I actually want you to see it to be aware of what's going on. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my emulator. I don't like working in the custom emulator. I like working in other emulators. So I'm going to work in Messin like I have with all the other tutorials. I've downloaded it to my desktop in a folder called Nest Stuff. Oops, that's the screen tool messing, and there we go. And I just need to navigate to my projects folder, um, which is NestMaker 4.1, Game Engine Data, Game. There we go. Now I'm all set up. Okay, let's start adding a few other things. Uh, now that I've got this, I'm going to make this run on a little bit longer. So I'll copy this screen, paste it here, paste it here, and let's just iron out the ground here and make these screens a little bit more interesting. We're not going to go crazy because uh, this is just to sort of give you some ideas. So on this screen here, I'm going to put a ladder and it's going to bring me up. Oops. I'm going to put a ladder and it's going to take me up through this ledge. And if I get up to that ledge, I'm going to put a checkpoint. Um, and on this first screen, sort of like other games in this genre, I'm going to put a little prize box here that will give you a thing. Uh, and on this third screen, I'm going to put a death trap. So I'm going to build a little stair step. And a little stair step over here. And I'm put spikes down here, like that. Uh, all right, so let's test this out. So what should happen is I should be able to get a prize here. I should be able to trigger this or not trigger it, and that'll activate a checkpoint. And here, when I run into the spikes, I should die. If I have triggered the checkpoint, I'll lose a life and start at my checkpoint. If I have not, I'll lose a life and start back here. If I'm out of lives, I'll always start back at the beginning. So let's test that and see if all those things work. All right, so I got my prize, my sword. I can go get it. And again, we're going to have to fix the offsets, but it did work. I am now in that state. I can climb the ladders. Oops, I forgot to uh, actually make the ladder so I can get up there, but I can get up there. Oh, checkpoint hit. Cool. Now if I die, I start at the checkpoint. Very cool. Very Everything's working pretty good. Let me fix that uh, offset. So again, where that offset is, if I just click the game objects, actually the word game objects, it takes me into this this offset uh, handler, and I'm just I just need right and left for this game, and I just happen to know these values are 24 and about 16, 15, 16, and that's about where my sword's going to be. And if I'm left, it's just zero and about 16, and now it'll be in the right spot. And now when I get the sword, it'll oops, sorry, not x value, y value. 16 down um, so now it'll be in the right place depending on which way I'm facing let's add some monsters so I just have one monster and he moves to the left um, very exciting monster so I'm gonna right click or I'm gonna click on monster groups I'm gonna click uh, choose slimes and this is something that's interesting to note uh, it's important to understand these guys are red. I want them to be red. I want them to be that color. So when I go to my overworld, I'm going to place them and I'll put them. I'm going to put this guy down here. So let's block him in like this. So I'm going to go to screen info. Day monsters. And I'm going to say slimes and I'm going to choose the color red and I'm going to put them in here. 
So I would expect that when I get to this part in the game, I'm going to see a red monster show up. I'm going to see something that I don't expect. Let's And let's talk about why. So I test my game. And if I come over here, I want to kill him. So I'm going to get my sword. Where is my red slime that I just created? He's right there. But wait a minute. He's the wrong color. He's supposed to be red, right? Oh, he got me. Okay. So if I want him to be red, I have to remember that since this is a scrolling game, I don't update my screen data or a lot of it as I go from screen to screen. So what I've got to do is... I've got to tell it at the screen where I'm starting from, what color do I want my objects? So here is where I need to set my monster palette. Even though there's no monsters on the screen, and even though I set them on this screen, it never actually loaded new screen information because it was no screen actually loaded. The screen never turned off for me to load new data. So uh, if I test my game now, I can get my sword, and now there's my red monster, and I kill him, and hurrah, and I die. Oh, no. Okay, so, and I get two lives left. Perfect. Let's add a way to get from, you know, let's add a couple of, uh, you know, treats in here for my character as well. Um, maybe here, like that. And then we'll add one more screen here, and in this screen, I'm going to put a level clear and that's a little anticlimactic compared to the other games in the genre um maybe he's compensating for something i don't know but uh we'll just put that at the top of a yeah we'll do this we'll put that at the top like that and f5 on that great so when i get this it's going to take me to the warp screen it's going to show my little happy victory animation and it's going to take me to my warp out screen so right now it would take me to zero zero let's make another screen and i'm going to make i'm going to copy this first screen and just paste it down here and let's you know let's uh completely change up how this looks i could change the palette so it looks like i'm somewhere else i could you know there's lots of things i could do um Let's uh let's just do one of these cheesy I'm in the second screen and I know it because it says so things that a lot of some NES games did two and I want them to appear right here in the two. So if I look up here, that position is ten eight. Screen info, my warp in position is ten eight. And now what screen is this? Where did I wanna where do I want to jump to? That's one three so here i need to tell it that my warp out is one three so let me play through the game and i should be able to get to the second level all right so i get my sword i come over here i fight the monster i get a few of these carrots and get some points Get the checkpoint, get these carrots, and hit the jump. Yay! And I'm on level two. Um, and so you notice that this actually changed to blue, and that's mostly because it, it, it loaded the graphics from, uh, uh, it's continued to load uh, attribute information for the scroll, and there's no screen here. So if I took a, this screen, I put it here and I'm just going to start my character here at the end so you can see um, now that the screens next to now that the screen next to it uh, has, is loading uh, this this white in the HUD area that shouldn't happen again let's test it out And now that doesn't happen again because that the, the next screen that's loading it, it doesn't have those uh, those wrong attributes at the top. So that's a quick look at how you can start constructing a platform game in the vein of that very popular one that came out uh, with the system, with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Obviously, we can't wait for you to dig into the deeper intermediate tutorials so you can really start to bend and break this and learn how to, to manipulate it to make your vision for a platform game for the NES.